As I have so many PowerPoint slides, I'll go over them rather quickly. This is my 88th episode. Today, my lecture is under the subheading of Lemming Effect. You may have heard of these rodents, called lemmings that inhabit the Scandinavian plains. Let me tell you what these rodents became known for. Sure, they have prolific reproduction, which is not what they are famous for, but for mass suicide. They often dive their deaths off cliffs. Scientists couldn't understand why these creatures would engage in these mass suicides. One of the early theories suggested that as their reproduction is so fast, that older lemmings gave way to younger ones by killing themselves. To avoid competition for food, that theory didn't make sense. Do rodents have reason? A prior generation gives way for their offspring by killing themselves? It just didn't make sense. So, more research followed and three reasons were discovered. First, they're nearsighted. They can't see far. Second, they run extremely fast. Their speed is lightning fast. Direction. When going forward, you must see other directions than forward and pay attention not to fall off cliffs. These creatures don't do that and know only going forward. The first ones fall and the rear ones follow along. They are super fast, so even if some of them want to stop, the rear ones push. How about in human society? Do we have lemmings? There are many. Trends dominate from shoes to hairstyle, you name it. There are trends in food, music, and whatnot. There is a trend even for it words. Why is there a lemming effect in human society? It is said to be survival instinct. We follow trends in order to survive. We can't resist the power to fit in. To apply this theory in pre-civilization settings, if you don't follow the group, you might get eaten by fierce animals. You must go along. Such traits and inborn instincts are still present in our genes. If others do it, I must do it too. That's the lemming effect. He looks familiar, right? Jungun An, a martyr. While he was imprisoned in Harbin, China, he drew many calligraphic works with sentences from the Analects of Confucius that he thoroughly memorized. A saying from the book goes like this. Confucius said, If you don't think far ahead, worries will be near you. No foresight means nearby fear. If you don't think far ahead of becoming an IM or a CM, you'll have to deal with worries immediately before you. You should go like, should I buy a $5 lunch for this partner or not? Should I give him $10 so that he can travel to the one-day seminar or not? These are your near worries. If you don't think far ahead, worries are near you. For the same thought, An added a new perspective. No far ahead thinking, no big tasks. If you don't think far ahead, you can't accomplish big tasks. If you don't think of becoming a royal master, your far ahead goal, you will never become one. Why? Your near worries will stop you. That's what An wrote. You really need to think ahead. The goose that laid the golden eggs, an Aesop fable. The farmer wanted all of the riches at once. Things don't work that way. He killed the goose. He went against the forces of nature. So, what should you be doing to make many golden eggs? You can make many more of those geese. That is, to make more partners. Don't go on betting after making several partners. Betting is basically opening the goose's belly. That's not how it works. Draining the pond to catch fish. The book has an episode of draining the pond to catch the fish in it. The man dried the pond. In that case, you sure can catch the fish in it, but what about the next season? The pond has dried up. Another saying meaning 
burning the forest. It says to burn the entire forest to catch a few deer. It all happens as they don't see ahead. Another saying from the Analects of Confucius. Zixia was one of ten disciples of Confucius. Many of his disciples became governors, which was a testament to his practical education. One of the disciples, Zixia, invited Confucius to have a discourse after becoming a governor. Master, what is the right way to govern? The master went, Do not rush. It means not to be in haste, trying to attain goals quickly. Don't covet small things, meaning not to be greedy for petty gains. Confucius went on to add, Haste delays, doesn't reach. If you rush things wanting to get there sooner, you'll get there later. That is, if you covet small gains, you won't achieve big tasks. Confucius predicted our MLM business way ahead, 2,500 years ago, I suspect. What should I go about the MLM business, Master? He went, don't try to achieve in haste. No coveting small things. Don't be greedy for small gains. If you rush things wanting to reach sooner, you'll get there later. If you obsess on small gains, you won't achieve big. Next. Let's go to Mencius this time. The phrase, instigate something, came from this book. So many expressions from Confucius and Mencius are being used in our times. You just are not aware of the fact. This story appears in one of the chapters from Mencius. A farmer in an ancient Chinese nation said to his son, Son, your father is very tired after having worked so hard in the rice field. The expression instigate comes from this action of pulling rice plants. Surprised, the son went to the rice field only to see pulled rice plants. The foolish father pulled the plants, meaning to encourage them, and they all withered to death. In other words, do not pull the heads of your partners. You might pull their heads off. They'll leave. What you should do is water and fertilize the plant. From the bottom, not to pull it from the top. So, Mencius too said these wise words, with this MLM business in mind 2,300 years ago. Next is from an ancient Indian Buddhist book. A wealthy man in India saw a nice three-story building next to his house and became envious of it. He asked a constructor to build him a three-story building. While men were working, the wealthy man saw the first floor being built. They were starting with the first floor, which the wealthy man wasn't interested in, and demanded only the third floor be built well. The first and second floors were constructed in haste, and the third floor fell down. What does this fable tell you? You must become a solid SM, then again a solid DM, and then move on to a sturdy SRM. What happens if you have eyes only for SRM? Everything will collapse for you. Now, a story from Aesop's Fables. A frog saw an ox for the first time who was enormous to him. The frog's son asked, Dad, can you be as large as the ox? The dad frog, who was too proud to say no, said, Sure, I can be as large as the ox. So he inflated his belly as big as he could until he inflated himself to death. If you're dead set only on higher masterships without considering your capacity, you'll blow yourselves up too. A Fool in the Shower, a theory from Milton Friedman, a professor at the University of Chicago, who was one of the best economists in history. This is one of his theories. He developed this theory to criticize the government's financial policies. A fool goes into the shower and turns on the water. But the water is cold at first. 
However, the hot water takes a while to arrive. So the fool simply turns the hot water up all the way, eventually scalding himself. This is what it's about. The bottom line is that, be it personal career or national policies, changing course too frequently will get you nowhere. Next is direction. In physics, there are concepts called speed and velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity, while velocity is a vector quantity. Scalar quantities have only magnitude and lack direction. Can you give me some examples? Your weight. It has magnitude but no direction. How about temperature? The number of people gathered here today. All of these have magnitude but no direction and thus are called scalar quantities. However, velocity has both magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. In the concept of velocity, the speed might be very fast but the velocity can be zero. For example, think of a squirrel on a treadwheel. The squirrel can't run any faster with an unbelievable speed. However, its position doesn't change at all. Its velocity is zero. Simply put, if you work to death as an SM with zero velocity, you can't become a DM. Your hard work is all for nothing. You ought to go in the right direction. If you go in this slanted direction, you might think you went far. The analysis shows that you veered too outwardly. You went forward only this much. Sidestepping will not get you to the destination. That's why they say to stay the course. Direction matters. Velocity should be high, not fast speed which will only bring you sorrows. Next, stampede phenomenon. In the world of animals, if one cow jumps, other cows all jump too. They all do it without knowing why. They just jump. Uncontrolled concerted running among herd animals, in which the group collectively begins running, is called stampede phenomenon. However, stampedes often occur in humans as well. Next slide. Folks who are startled by fake ghosts. A group of villagers suffering a drought went to another town for food. A legend said there was a ghost called a rock shasha that eats humans it finds in the mountains. On a cold evening, a fellow sitting around a bonfire put on a costume that looked like a rock shasha because he became cold. To others, it looked like the real ghost. And they started to run. Even the fellow wearing the ghost costume ran too without realizing it. People started seeing the ghost following them and ran even harder. Soon everyone was running panicked. The fellow wearing the ghost's garment ran without realizing his outfit. The village people kept running thinking the monster was after them. It's an ancient Indian folktale. The next morning, all the village people were found in a ditch exhausted. They were all villagers. And none was the monster. Don't just run because others are running. Stop and think why you are running. This is a folktale from China. There were many bandits in the mountains. A tavern was at the foot of the mountains. And the tavern lady strongly discouraged a man professing his desire to go to the mountains. The man went ahead anyway only to face the bandits who demanded his belongings which he gave away willingly. He took off everything he had for the bandits to take and showed his neck so they could behead him. His behavior not only shocked but also almost impressed the outlaws who gave away their possessions to the guy and disappeared. This event became news and people became intrigued. One person wanted to replicate this heroic deed, despite others' discouragement. 
The fool did exactly what the other guy had done. But the upset bandits didn't let him live. They cut his head off. Don't try this at home. Don't follow the crowd blindly. You should think rationally. This has been a Chinese heroic folktale. What I'm really trying to say here is that if you get involved in foul play and cutting corners, it's likely others will copy you, causing a lemming effect and stampede. You shouldn't go there. Those practices won't get you anywhere. Another from the Analex. You've heard of too much of a good thing. In other words, too much is just as bad as too little. Too much and too little are the same. Among many disciples of Confucius, one named Zhizhang had remarkable mental sharpness and ability and was one of the most forward talkers. He was rather hot-tempered and his actions followed his words. On the other hand, Zixia was a man of consideration. He was more of a thinker than an actor. Thus, a third disciple, Jigong, asked the master about the two disciples. Confucius went, Zhizhang is too much and Zixia is too little. You mean the excessive one is better than the deficient one? The master said excess is just as bad as deficiency. Simply put, those who can't get up to higher masterships fast enough are just as terrible as those who are too lazy to care. Why not grit your teeth and do some work? Both bad. This is what Confucius has been lecturing to us. Since 2,500 years ago. Next, down and fall. You all heard the word downfall, right? It's from this legend. These two imaginary animals are somewhat similar to wolves or wild dogs. Both of the Chinese characters refer to canines. Down has two long front legs, but the hind legs are either not there or too short. Personality-wise, it is extremely brave. But dumb as a box of rocks. You can call it reckless. On the other hand, fall has hind legs, but no front legs. It is very fearful, but intelligent. It thinks strategically. Therefore, down and fall must be together all the time, otherwise they will starve to death. This is a very well-known tale from ancient China. Applying this story to us, we have decisive people with hot tempers and mild-mannered considerate people. All of them are needed. Some people have only front legs and others have only hind legs. However, these two must unite themselves to be able to live a normal life. Here comes the moral of the story, an episode from an ancient Chinese history book by Sima Qian, the greatest Chinese historian. The Tao also talks about a disciple of Confucius, Jimen Bao, who became mayor of a town in ancient China. Touring the town, the mayor arrived in a shady alley. So he asked his associates why. That day happened to be the day when local authorities sacrificed a virgin to the god of the Huang River, a yearly event. They consecrated young pretty virgins. Jimin Bao, the new mayor, decided to pay a visit to the ceremony where he saw an old shaman and performers dancing and doing stuff with many spectators surrounding them. He learned that several established members of the community embezzled money with an excuse like this event to the distress of the ordinary citizens. Ximin Bao insisted watching the ceremony as the mayor of the town. When they were getting ready, to throw a girl into the river to marry her and the river god. The mayor interrupted, The girl is not pretty enough. This might anger the god. We should try this again with a prettier girl. 
However, the river God will get mad. If no one shows up on his wedding day, he approached the old shaman and suggested she go talk to the river god. The mayor had his men grab the old shaman and threw her into the river. The old shaman never resurfaced. This was not enough punishment. He went on to arrest many of the shaman's dancers and threw them into the river too. The town's greedy, old influences were captured and thrown into the river as well. No one survived the river. The mayor thought this was not enough to eradicate the vice of the town. So, he rounded up the corrupt town officials and threatened to throw them into the water. They all vowed never to do it again. Legend has it that this town flourished in prosperity as no other places ever had in 3,000 years and went down in history with great pride and reputation, along with that of Jimin Bao. All of this came from a Chinese history book. The same applies to you Atomians. If someone tries to exploit you, throw them into the water. We need to keep these rotten people out to maintain our healthy ecosystem. Wishing everyone success within three to five years. I'm ending my lecture. Thank you.